It's You Know Who, and you're watching some questionable gaming news. First up and most recently, Hato Moa, the developer of famous 2010's dating simulator Hatoful Boyfriend, has accused Epic Games of not paying any royalties on the game to her for the past two years. With this accusation, Moa was tracked down in her lavish home, and we present to you the interview that transpired. Truly, sad news to hear right from the horse's mouth. Current American President Joe Biden, a known fan of birds, announced soon after this interview that he would personally be going to the Epic Games store to have his pigeons poke out CEO Tim Sweeney's eyes. Oof, yeah, hate to hear it. No, nope, nothing to be bad To reinforce the seriousness of this issue, we here have done the math on the royalties Moa has lost. Let's assume that over two years, Hotful Boyfriend would sell over maybe 10,000 copies, accounting for age and popularity. And then let's now multiply that by the percentage of gamers who actually buy off the Epic Game Store. Oh my goodness, that's at least half a Snickers bar. Next, in some more tragic news, Nintendo has officially stated that they will shut down online play, communication, and all functionalities for all 3DS and Wii U software. In April. Early April. Like... April 1st kind of April. So this is obviously a, just a just a joke, just a funny joke post by Nintendo. I mean, they've never done anything like this before. But just in case this worldwide genocide of technology comes to pass, the most we can do is remind you of the games that will be affected. This way, you may prepare accordingly and kiss your favorite game cartridges goodbye before burying them right next to your dead goldfish. Impact of games include Animal Crossing New Leaf, Super Smash Bros. for the 3DS and Wii U, Pokemon Black and White, but not XY, or Ass or Sun or Moon, those are fine. Splatoon. Mario Maker, oh wait, actually that's already dead. Professor Layton vs. Phoenix Wright. And of course, most tragically of all, the Nintendo 3DS Guide for the Louvre. For our next story, Blizzard has announced that Diablo 4 will be getting its second ever update, Diablo 4, Reaper of Blood. It seems Blizzard has been listening to the feedback of the 20 remaining players who are beating each other up in PvP, as they are adding some highly requested quality of life features. These include improving the horse riding experience, putting a search bar in the stash menu, and finally adding a 15% fun factor into the game. Whoopee! Game reviewers and players alike seem hopeful for this update, just as they were hopeful for when Diablo 4 was initially released. So hopefully, they play for more than a month this time, am I right? Blizzard has stated in a recent X post that if their analytics don't show a player base increase of 90% by the end of the year, they will consider shutting down the game services to focus development on Diablo 4 Wrath of the Lich King. Should this claim be true, our sources say we can expect a release date of approximately 3009. In more lighter news, leakers and whistleblowers alike have revealed that SEGA will be announcing at the world-famous Sonic Square event that everyone definitely knows about that virtual YouTuber Inugami Korone will become an official part of canon lore and can be expected to be featured in every game as of now. When asked about the decisions behind this choice, only an intern who preferred to remain anonymous due to non-disclosure agreements replied, stating that, Look, we know what kind of fanbase our characters are attracting, both figuratively and literally. Amy Rose and Blaze the Cat are a thing of the past. Anime girls are expected to increase our net sales by 80%. Inugami Korone will be such an integral part of the series now that at the Sonic Square event, you may take a commemorative photo with Korone herself. And just Korone. With no Sonic. And this is at the Sonic Square event. It's, uh, there's no Sonic photos apparently. Leakers have also provided images of what the VTubers' appearances may look like in-game, which has sparked zero backlash within the Sonic community, though some have called it, and I quote, out of place. I don't think they're wrong. Finally, Undead Game Company Atari has announced that it will be making its glorious comeback to the game scene, stating that, and I quote, We figured it out! If we keep making the same products we did in 1977, we're bound to get somewhere. Our research shows that this claim is likely true, actually, as their present consumer base is probably those looking for nostalgia, and let's say a 16-year-old playing the Atari in 1980 would now be 59, meaning they probably only have the motor skills to play Pitfall and Maze Craze. Sorry. Fellow old game companies like Origin and Acclaim shared their praise and well wishes for Atari, but we were unable to gain any showing or real evidence of this because it was all just sent through facts. Of course, Atari is not simply reprinting the same games they once did, no way. In the modern age, better graphics and gameplay have been considered. Take a look at this screenshot of Mr. Run and Jump in the modern age. If you look very closely, there's at least two more shades of blue and 48 more pixels compared to the original release. 
Well, that was all the news that I was going to go find. Remember, you should probably be fact-checking this. I don't know where I lied and where I didn't. Next time, <laughs> Pac-Man's divorce with Miss Pac-Man. Wait, was it Pac-Woman?